please be seated. I like to start my messages off with something a little bit lighthearted. And I heard about this pastor who was doing an adult Bible study, and he was trying to teach his class about we don't know when our last day on earth might be. And so he's trying to teach his adult Bible study to always be prepared for death. And so he gave his class a little bit of a, a test. And he said to his class, if you knew you had only four weeks to live, what would you do differently? Someone stood up and said if they knew they had four weeks to live, they would go around their community and spread the gospel, spread the, the message of Jesus Christ to as many people as they possibly could, bringing people to the faith. Everybody in the class very politely clapped and said, that'd be a great way to spend those four weeks. Another person said they would do as much service as they possibly could. They would look around their town, and when there was need, they would roll their sleeves up, and they would help their fellow man. Once again, the class very politely clapped and cheered and said, that was an equally good way to spend those last four weeks. Finally, a man on the way back to the classroom said, if he had four weeks to live, he would rent a very small, compact car, and he'd travel around all of the United States with his mother-in-law and stay at the cheapest hotels every night. The class looked at this man and said, why in the world would you choose that? He said, well, it'd be the longest four weeks of my life, at least. <laughs> that was a new one, all right? What do you think? Did that make the rotation or not? Grace and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and from our Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Today we continue our summer sermon series on the book of Proverbs. And just a quick rehash, Proverbs is written by the wise King Solomon, the wisest man to ever walk this earth. God bless Solomon with this immense amount of wisdom and this immense amount of knowledge. In the book of Proverbs, Solomon is trying to teach us how to live this life well. He's trying to give us pointers on all kinds of different topics, how to use Money, how to act with your neighbors, how to, to raise your children, what type of discipline to use on them, as well as what are we to say? How are we to communicate with others? Now, this book, it's originally really intended for, for young people to read. And you might consider it kind of a historic textbook. This would be given to the youngest of kids, and they would read it. And they'd often memorize these short verses, which is why a lot of Proverbs is one or two verses at a time. It's easier for kids to memorize these things. And so kids would take it, they would memorize it, and they would learn about life. Today I want to talk about our words, what we say, and specifically I want to talk about gossiping and about lying. Before I do that, though, ever heard this phrase, sticks and stones may break my bones, but you got it. Words will never hurt me. Is that true? What do you think? Sticks and stones, we know they can hurt us. We know physically we can be harmed by sticks and stones. But the whole idea is, you know, words just wash over us. You know, words, they shouldn't impact us. They're just words. Sticks and stones harm me. Words, forget about them. What do you think? Is that true? Is that real? I'll tell you, Proverbs says the opposite, that words do matter. And words can deeply harm us as human beings. King Solomon knew this, that words have a way cutting us to the core. Words have a way of sticking with us for days, weeks, sometimes years. And so when we think about how we communicate with others, we really need to be careful in how we go about doing that. Today I want to start with gossiping. And I think, you know, part of us, that every one of us kind of likes gossiping at least a little bit. And I know you might be thinking, you know, I try to avoid gossiping, but there's something about gossiping 
It's almost like a little bit fun, isn't it? Especially if you're in some really good gossip. And I don't know what it is. What is, what is it about gossiping that makes us enjoy it? Because I don't think there would be any gossiping whatsoever if there wasn't at least a small part inside of us that likes to gossip. Think about your life. When you are gossiping, what do you enjoy about that? Why do you enjoy gossiping? And I'm convinced one of the biggest reasons we enjoy gossiping is it makes us feel included. Right? If we're talking about somebody else, we're in this group and we're all kind of gathered together and gossiping about, you know, a friend or someone we dislike, and it makes us feel as though we're on the inside, right? We're a part of this group and we're together and we're all talking about this other human being. It makes us feel kind of like we belong. In fact, some of the most popular TV shows today centers around gossiping. Now, if you know these ladies up on the screen, they make a lot, a lot of money by gossiping. Real Housewives, that's all the rage nowadays on reality TV show, and they, they center around gossiping, and they get together at dinner parties, and they just start to gossip. And people would not watch this if they did not enjoy gossiping. Proverbs warns us, though, of gossiping. Because gossiping, and when we engage in it, we are hurting and we are harming other human beings. Proverbs very clearly warns us against gossiping, that we need to avoid it at all costs. Proverbs 20, 19 has this to say about gossiping. It says, a gossip betrays a confidence. So avoid anyone who talks too much. Now remember, this is intended really for kids, but also for us adult beings. Avoid anybody who talks too much. Now if you've got a kid in your life, is this good advice? You're trying to teach them which, which people to befriend, which people to hang around, and you try and teach them, you know, those people, they gossip too much, there's too much drama, there's just too much going on, there. avoid these people. It's true for us adult beings as well. When we surround ourselves with gossiping people, it just it brings us down. In Proverbs 26, 20, verse, and 21 says this about gossiping. Without wood, a fire goes out. Without a gossip, a quarrel dies down. So it equates gossiping with a fire. If you don't put any more wood on the fire, eventually it'll die down. Eventually it'll go away. So it is with the quarrel. If you don't have someone that's gossiping, someone that's stoking it, eventually it'll just fade away. As charcoal to embers and as wood to fire, so is a quarrelsome person for kindling fire. Now, part of the problem is, and I can hear some people thinking this, well, what if there really is a problem? Because a lot of times we gossip because there's some type of issue, there's something wrong going on. How do we address that? If we don't gossip, if we don't you know, talk amongst ourselves, how do we fix the problem? And in fact, Jesus addresses this head on and it tells us exactly what to do. Matthew 18, Jesus says, If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. So you go one on one. If you have an issue, if you have a problem, you address them head on. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. So you start with one person, and then you, you bring a few friends along as well. And finally, if the member refuses to listen, tell it to the wider church. So rather than gossiping, you go directly to them. And my challenge to you and for all of us is to avoid gossiping. For some of us, it's harder than, than for others. But when you find yourself in that situation and you feel that gossip starting, stand up and remove yourself or speak up and say, you know, we probably shouldn't be saying this without them here. I just don't feel comfortable doing that. And the Proverbs teaches that. So gossip is the first thing. But the second thing is lying. And all of you probably watched this cartoon growing up, Pinocchio, right? 
And what's Pinocchio's problem? When he lies, what happens to his nose? It grows. When he tells another lie, what happens then? It grows a little bit more. And every lie Pinocchio tells, his nose just keeps growing. Now, do you wish that when someone was lying to you, that would happen to their nose as well? Wouldn't that be great? If you had that power, when you're speaking with people and they're lying to you, their nose would just start to grow. Now, how about yourself? If your nose would grow, would you be okay and comfortable doing that? Lies. Now, why do people lie? I want you to try and think about, maybe it was the last time that you lied. Can you think about that? The last time you lied, why did you do it? Now, I think a common reason that people lie is, you know, we don't want to hurt feelings. And sometimes we have white lies. And sometimes, you know, when something goes wrong or someone screws up, it's easier just to say, you know, you did okay. You know, as your pastor, I've never, had, I've never had someone say to me after worship, Pastor, that sermon was a clunker. <laughs> you better do better next week. Otherwise, you know, people are going to start talking about you. But, you know, I've been doing this for two years, and I'm sure I've had good sermons, and I've had average sermons, and I know I've had bad sermons. But, you know, we just, we don't like to say, you know, you need to do better. And so sometimes we, we tell lies to, to make ourselves feel better, to make them feel better. Just it's easier to do to just tell a little bit of a white lie. But it goes, it's, it's deeper than that. Sometimes we tell lies to escape accountability, Right? We do something wrong, or maybe we didn't do something that we were supposed to do. The Lindemann household has just recently experienced this. There's a big hole in one of the downstairs walls downstairs, and we don't know who did it, right? <laughs> and it wasn't the dog because it's high enough, all right? I'm not blaming the dog. I mean, we don't know who did it. It's, it's, it's escaping accountability. So sometimes we lie so we don't get in trouble. Another reason I think we commonly lie is to make ourselves look better. We tell a little bit of lie that just makes us seem a little bit better than reality. It just makes us look better to other people. Anytime you apply for a new job, you're filling out your resume, and what are you going to put down? You're going to try and put down the best things about yourself, right? You're not going to put down those bad things about yourself. You're going to try and put your best foot forward, and sometimes you just try and present a little bit of a, a little bit better image of yourself than what is reality. And so we lie. But Proverbs warns against this. Because when we lie, we lose that accountability. When we lie and people know we are lying, how can we trust those people in our lives? I'm convinced when we lie to some other person, we are really stealing from them. I'll say that again. When we lie to somebody, we are stealing from them because we are not giving them the truth. We are having something that we know to be different, and we are not sharing it with that person that we're talking with. And so our challenge for the week ahead and for our lives is to avoid gossiping and to be truth-tellers. I'm going to end with this quote. I love it. This quote comes from John Spruce. John Spruce says, if you tell the truth, it becomes a part of your past. If you tell the truth, it becomes a part of your past. But if you lie, it becomes a part of your future. Now, why is that? If you lie, you get to remember that lie. If you lie, it becomes a part of, you know, what if they find out about my lie? But if you tell the truth... We move past it. Our words matter, people. Our words can build up or they can tear down. And so Proverbs teaches us to use our words carefully. May we strive to do that as we live this life, striving to walk in Jesus' footsteps. Amen? Amen.